Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to the Green Fleet Round Table. The Nottingham adopted a very aggressive, proactive um, strategy right from the start, and to the point, in fact, where of course it's it's not implementing a clean air zone because it's said to um, central government, look, we're going to meet our targets that you'd like us to meet um, earlier than what was originally forecast. So in actual fact, we don't now need to implement the clean air zone. Um, we're going to you know, scrap the whole thing. And the government has accepted that. So you know, that's, that's a really good example of, of what can be done in a clean air zone. It's under the umbrella of a clean air zone. But is it that, or is it we can charge here and we can get this, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. What's what's Plan B? If that doesn't work. The Road to Zero uh, policy initiative, which will reduce uh, transport emissions significantly. Um, are these things enough to change behaviour, or is it people like you that change behaviour by demonstrating leadership? <coughs> I think. The initiatives that get promoted, plug and cover up, etc., need to be around for the longer term than what seems to be a relatively short space of time when you're trying to make a change to something that the internal combustion engine has been in place for years and years and years. It's not going to change overnight. So these initiatives do need to be in for the long term. Now, I don't know what the long term is, but they need to be around to really get embedded, mm. you know, um, they're all good, but are they around for long enough is, 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 is a view we take. We've actually faced that sort of problem recently. Um, so we are setting up a zero emission zone in Oxford, um, so one step further than the clean air zone. Um, but we've had a lot of pushback from the various local businesses. So based around that, we've actually had to put the plans back slightly. So we're still implementing a zone as of 2020, which was the original plan, we've had to change how that works. So only we'll operate probably between 10 and 6 um, for the first two years. And then um, we pushed it back because of the businesses not being able to actually cope. A hard nut to crack. Taxes are always seen as one of those really difficult areas to decarbonise to reduce emissions. <coughs> We've got about 100 electric taxis in Dundee, uh, in one of our cities in Scotland. Uh, you've got a few yourself, don't yeah, you? You're, you're yeah, you're way ahead of the curve. Um, I think we bought the 20 something kilowatts back in 2014. We really struggled. They sat the compound for the best part of the year. We couldn't incentivise the drivers to take them because the mileage wasn't there. And um, last year we took on 12, 40 kilowatt vehicles and they've just been. Yeah, absolute revelation. The range is now about 150. Yeah, and it's real well 150. So I've got in mind today, left with 152 on the clock, and I've got 90 something to get back. So I know I'll come through without charge. We'll get back. I do see the benefits of them as well. You know, as, as you mentioned, if you've got electric vehicles running in certain areas, it reduces the emissions in that area, which is a good thing. Um, you know, we've got a lot of considerations to take into account. Um, is the the attitude of, of police officers in making sure the vehicles are charged up. We've got a lot of vehicles which crash a lot. And we write an awful lot of cars off and repair costs are a big thing for us. I'm the only person within, within my force who's, who's thinking, we need to think about this. We need to look at doing something. So when I looked at it, barriers that people sort of bring up. So range was always one that, well, we don't have the range. So well, we have telematics in, 98% of our fleet, so actually, no, because <laughs> I can see a day, a week, a month, however long, yeah. no one's going over yeah. 100 miles, or very few people are going over 100 miles a day, so that's not an issue. Next. <laughs> um, but it, it would change operationally, so we have, uh, you know, tradespeople have a job metric per day, um, you have to do this many jobs per day, and, yeah. and that's what they do. So, you know, I know they have a diary, which they work off. We at the minute do not schedule time for them to refuel. We give them a fuel card and hope it happens. Um, whereas with charging, so we'd be heavily reliant on the infrastructure. Dealing with this capacity, 
that's the biggest problem that we face as an installer is turning up to a site and identifying whether they have enough capacity. We can't just put low scale charging on the side of the building and then hope that it works because it won't, it will fail. And then the fallout from that will be much more costly. Someone like us who offers a maintenance contract where we can we get email and text alerts from the charger if there's a problem or if uh, you know if a particular customer wants a usage report, we get that email to us on a weekly basis, and it's just about forwarding it out. But with the back office, these these chargers will they have an internal IP address, so they have a web page almost that you can look into and check the the usage of the charges and they will um, and, and they will tell you what's wrong with them. So you can go back to the manufacturer and say, I've got this problem, what part do I need, that part, and then you turn up and fix it. And it's all covered under a maintenance contract as part of the back office. It's about knowing what you knowing what going through the right avenues to know what you need, what you want and what's available and then finding the best fit situation. We know it's very start. The first question that everyone asks was oh, which is the battery? We've noticed over the last year that that question has asked less and less and less now. We can do a full health check through the through the whole battery pack. <coughs> mm. So you've you take you've got seven individual cells within modular and within the battery bank then you've got 104 modulars. So we can go and check it, yeah, with a cell weak in that. We can just replace that modular rather than replacing the whole yeah. battery bank. So it's a, it's a it's a maintenance cost essentially, but it's relatively small maintenance cost. Because you're lifting out a small cell, mm. you're not taking out all the batteries, chucking them away. The challenge is with leasing, uh, the lease cars, is because the technology is evolving so fast, no sooner are you trying to sell the old model, mm. the new, much better models come out depressing the value. Tesla do what they've done this week, duck the, duck, duck the price. Well, there's loads of vehicles with RVs been set yes. this year. Yes. So it makes it very, very challenging, mm. very volatile. But that's just because it's always it's, it's changing. The last thing we want to do is for a salesperson to be talking about the vehicle is to discuss your day-to-day -day business model and to get an understanding of what actually you need the, the electric vehicle to do for you. Don't start talking about electric vehicle first. Mm -hmm. Get an understanding of what the, what the business is, what you need it to do. Um, you know, and then the final thing is, you know, is to dentist the infrastructure. You know, do you have you know do you need a rapid charger? Do you need this you know slow charger? What do you need the vehicle to do in that? Uh, and then this is to try the vehicle for you, you, you purchase it so that you're comfortable with saying, yeah, I've made the right decision, this is a vehicle, vehicle for me. Because the reality is, it's just another vehicle with a different drivetrain. Yeah. That's it. And if it will do the job for you, happy days, if it can save you some money. Charge points can be 50% funded when they're installed uh, by the government. But there's still that 50% requirement to fund it. And, and I wondered, and Sally wondered, if there are charge point manufacturers or operators who would be prepared to enter into agreements to fund the other 50% of access to the customers, the data, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, we can see these charge points in public car parks mm -hmm. that obviously are installed by some EV company. Um, whether we can work in partnership with a company like that at the hospital sites for the public parking, um, for them to obviously recoup costs of the charge um, to the customer and yeah. then uh, an organisation that can get the charge points put in and then run that network mm. and manage that system. Um, if they are funding all of that, so they're paying for the stuff to go in and so on, then they've got to recoup their money of and of course the way to do that is the pence per kilowatt hour. We've got the last mile delivery solution go forward. Do we put everyone in electric trucks and sit in the same traffic jam that the diesel vehicles are in? Do we combat congestion by reducing the amount of vehicles we need, by looking at alternative delivery modes, such as walking deliveries or um, cargo banks, that sort of thing? So the, what my point is, is that a whole answer is not just electric trucks. Well, it's the congestion that is the real mm -hmm. issue. I want to be cautious and learn by other people's mistakes and wait until the technology is, is just moved on a bit <coughs> so that we can, you know, if, if the battery technology changes, you're still all going on about chargers and where chargers should go. If you have decent batteries with decent technology, you wouldn't need all these chargers.
And that's what the issue is. What's happening with battery technology, Mark? The timeline, like for an improvement to the sorts of ranges that Andy's talking about. Come here, here. Um, if you look at us uh, today, let's say the battery we have is a 56 kilowatt battery, um, 59 battery. It can charge approximately 30 kilowatts constant per hour, so it'll be an hour and a half uh, full charge on the vehicle. Um, it will spike up at 50, 60, and then it'll drop back down and level off at 30 kilowatts an hour. We have a newer vehicle coming um, early next year, which is a smaller vehicle, so there's 4.1 cube, 6.1 cube, one ton payload. Uh, and that'll charge at about 58 kilowatts per hour. So I mean, it's, it's not just about the batteries, it's, it's about the battery management system. It's just as important as the, the batteries in the vehicle. Um, regeneration or regen braking on the vehicle. But going forward, yeah, battery technology, lucky enough because we're a van, in five years time, we don't know where, you know, we'll be a battery half the size with twice the output. That's what I'm talking about. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a van, we have 120 miles such as today, you know, in five years time, you know, it's like a smartphone where the oldest you know phone on the in, on the shelf is going to be obsolete. No, it's still going to be doing the same job. It's still going to be the cleanest vehicle out there at, at 120 mile range, zero emissions. So I mean, it just means you can get a better vehicle probably going forward that maybe have a little bit more payload and stuff. Um, underneath the vehicle, it's a rectangle box. It's, it's plugged in, so it's like a, an additional battery bank for your phone. So I mean, plug it out. You can probably put in a battery underneath this but twice the output with half the weight. Um, and one of the challenges that we've had, um, our psych, at those at the very start of electric vehicles, is getting the access to batteries and to the technology behind it. Um, they've invested into a company called CATL, who will be the third largest lithium ion battery manufacturer, battery management system company in the world, the biggest in China. And psych have just invested in over a billion in, into the joint venture with them to secure the technology and access to batteries going, going forward. Dan, how can we use what the AA do, for instance, to help join these local initiatives together to start to get a groundswell of activity? I, I, I guess it's about you know engaging with the right audience, getting the right message out there, but also as an organisation being able to deliver what the market is needing at any given time and then evolving that offering over time. We started this whole thing saying, we need to talk about electric vehicles. And the consensus seems to be that that is a solution for some. It is not the only solution. But there are a whole host of things, behaviour change, things that need to happen from a consumer perspective. There need to be uh, strategic changes to the way that we arrive at policies which enable us to reduce congestion, which will ultimately then reduce the emissions, which will save lives.